Bacteria are primarily classified into two main types, gram-negative and gram-positive. This designation is based on a laboratory test that distinguishes bacteria based on the composition of the outermost part of the bacterium, known as the cell wall. Overall, infections caused by gram-negative bacteria now account for more than 30% of common hospital-acquired or nosocomial infections. In addition, they are the leading causes of nosocomial pneumonia and urinary tract infections, or UTIs. Gram-negative bacteria such as Pseudomonas aeruginosa, Klebsiella pneumoniae, and Escherichia coli are becoming more resistant to the antibiotics we have available, leaving doctors with limited options to manage patients with infections caused by these organisms. Gram-negative bacteria have a cell wall that lies between the outer membrane and the inner cytoplasmic membrane. The cell wall contains penicillin binding proteins, or PBPs. PBPs help build new cell wall during growth and division, maintaining its integrity. Beta-lactam antibiotics bind to these PBPs and weaken the cell wall, resulting in the cell's death. Gram-negative bacteria, common in hospital-acquired infections, often contain several mechanisms that can render antibiotics ineffective, including changing the outer membrane and preventing antibiotics from entering, and pushing antibiotics out that do get through by using efflux pumps. Certain gram-negative bacteria can also produce beta-lactamase. These enzymes inactivate beta-lactam antibiotics and keep them from binding to PBPs. Some gram-negative bacteria can produce powerful beta-lactamases, called extended-spectrum beta-lactamases, or ESBLs. ESBLs can render penicillins, cephalosporins, and monobactams inactive. In order to effectively treat infections caused by drug-resistant gram-negative bacteria, new antibiotics that overcome multiple mechanisms of resistance are needed.